all right so price ceiling this is the maximum limit on the price okay so this is usually done when the government wants to protect the suppliers okay let's assume that so these are the exactly same demand and supply function as the previous examples and we got this uh, equilibrium without any intervention eight dollar but let's assume that this eight dollar this price is too high okay so the government wants to lower the price okay uh, sorry sorry uh, sorry it's to protect the consumers okay price ceiling so usually it's a necessities okay for example can be a mask or any like rice or milk that is essential for the consumers okay they want to lower the government wants to lower the price then they put the price ceiling and i said previously that the most um significant in example of price ceiling is on the housing price so it's extremely important okay so in singapore you don't have price ceiling but you have hdbs in denmark they do have price ceiling so even in the center central area copenhagen the price of the housing is quite affordable okay much lower than the central area in Singapore because of the price ceiling so price ceiling protects the consumers all right so this example we can try so let's say price ceiling is the six dollar okay and let's try to do the welfare analysis so we call this price ceiling is binding because it is effective because it is lower than the equilibrium price if it's higher than the equilibrium price, it's meaningless because anyway, the equilibrium price will go to the equilibrium, okay? All right, so with the price ceiling $6, your P star, P star is price ceiling because people want to pay higher, you know, but it's, uh, the government is limiting the price to be six. All right, so P star is the maximum of the price ceiling, $6. And when the price ceiling is $6, when the P is $6, suppliers will want to supply only 4 million instead of 6. Okay, 4 million. That's what they want to supply. Up to 4. So there in the market, there are only 4 million of the goods. Okay. However, how many people are willing to purchase at $6? So in the previous uh, demand lecture, I we discussed that the demand curve is also willingness to pay curve or valuation curve. So you can view this demand curve as uh, 7 million people lining up in order. So if a person is standing here it means that she has valuation twenty dollar for this good and it keeps going down your value isn't going down so if you are standing at the last as a seven million this seventh order then this person has a valuation for the good at six dollar so it so you are in the you are standing in the order okay in the order of your valuation all right, so if the price is $6, okay, then how many people are willing to buy this good at $6? Of course, all these people lining up from 0 to 7 because they have a higher valuation than $6, they are all willing to purchase the good. If you are standing here after 7, it means that your valuation is lower than $6. So, of course, you don't want to pay $6. To buy that good all right so there are only four million goods but there are seven million people who want to buy okay so when we when it comes to consumer surplus okay 
you can only have the range of a consumer surplus minimum and maximum okay because it because your customer surplus depends on which person which group of people will get this four million goods out of seven million people okay so when is your cs consumer surplus maximized your consumer surplus will be maximized when the the people with the highest valuation so people that are standing in the front okay, they are having the highest valuation when they get the four million goods okay so that will result in highest consumer surplus so basically it's these people from zero to four okay the consumer who are standing in the front has the high valuation highest highest valuation coming from zero to four so what is the consumer surplus in this case they pay six dollars okay they pay six dollars to buy four millions of the good so this is what they pay okay what is their total valuation for the four millions of the goods it is this big trapezoid area so that's their valuation total value minus what you pay so it, your consumer surplus will be S W T Y. Okay. So that's the maximum consumer surplus. What is the minimum sur consumer surplus? So there are only, I said, four millions of the goods that are available in the market. So in order to get the minimum consumer surplus, you have to find the people who have the least valuation among these 7 million people. In order to do that, you go from back. So this is the person who has the lowest valuation among the 7 million people. Okay, go from 7. So you count 4 million backward from 7. So what is the 4 million? 7 minus 3 is the... 4 million people so go come from here to these people these 4 million people they have the lowest valuation among the 7 million people okay so what is their if they buy the goods their total valuation will be this much and then right? and then what they pay is 4 times 6 what they, this is what they pay so this trap, this area U R X is the lowest, the minimum consumer surplus. Okay. Now what is the purchase surplus? It's easy. Purchase surplus is fixed because there are four million suppliers at six dollar. <clears throat> what they the, their revenue is four times six this is their revenue and we proved in lecture when lecture seven lecture six that the area under the supply curve is the non-sum cost curve so ps is equal to scw total revenue minus non-sum cost okay all right now let's just that there is also price floor. It's the opposite um, concept. It's the minimum price. Okay. So minimum price usually in uh, occurs to protect the suppliers. And I said the price floor, the example is minimum wage. Okay, so you have the labor market. Firms demand your labor. 
and you guys supply your labor labor okay but the government doesn't want people to be exploited at a too low wage okay if some people get too low wage they were they not might not be happy okay some people will exploit their labor and they have to work too much to survive so in order to prevent that, they say, okay, wage has to be at a certain level, okay? If this equilibrium wage is too low, okay? So this is to protect the suppliers, okay? All right, so in order for this price floor to be effective, it has to be over the original equilibrium price, of course. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Okay. So price floor, let's say it's $12. Okay. So then there will be demand only 4 millions. However, there will be more suppliers who are willing to supply because supply curve is also a marginal cost curve, right? So if your price, which is the marginal revenue, is higher than marginal cost, these suppliers are all willing to produce because their marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, right? So again, let's line up all the suppliers from zero to 10 million. Okay, let's say there are suppliers, okay? And this supplier has the lowest marginal cost which means that they are efficient and then you line up all the suppliers you know in the in the order of marginal cost okay so this person has the most inefficient supply okay the highest marginal cost okay so because there is only four millions of deep demand there will be q star will be four million okay and P star will be 12, okay? So at the $12, consumer surplus is easy because there is only, <coughs> the Q star is determined by the consumers, right? Okay, so what is the consumer surplus? $12, 4 millions. So YR, YRT, will be the consumer surplus. Your producer surplus. So similar logic applies. What is the maximum per producer surplus? It is when, so there are 4 million goods, okay, that are demanded. So if the most efficient suppliers from zero to four, if they produce, they have the least marginal cost, right? If they produce, they can have the highest producer surplus. So these producers earn, what is the revenue? Revenue is 12 times four. That's the, what they earn. And this is their cost, the area under the supply curve. So revenue minus cost is producer surplus, which is RTWZ. So that's the maximum producer surplus produced by the most efficient suppliers who has the least marginal cost. <clears throat> when does the producer surplus minimized? Is, is it minimized and when it's produced by the most inefficient producers which is lined up from the back in the back six to ten four million from the back so for these people the producer surplus is mvn This is consumer surplus and producer surplus is has the minimum and maximum. All right, so.